Uh, kia ora tātou, uh, ko Carl McGuinness tōku ingoa, no Tūronga Nui a Kiwi a hou, e kai mahi a homo tu tapa a Tūroa, e roto, e te wāhanga, kai whakahairi papa a te pai. Well, greetings all, uh, thanks for coming here, I'm Carl McGuinness, I'm the Director of Conservation for the Nature Conservancy here in New Zealand. Uh, fantastic to see everyone here for the uh, mahi tahi on the shellfish restoration, and in particular, uh, the Hauraki Gulf's uh, big goal of 1,000 kilometres squared of shellfish beds and reefs restored. Well, that's around 8% of the marine park. Um, I'll facilitate through the session, so we've got a couple of uh, awesome talks coming up. Um, if there's time for questions, we'll take that. Uh, we'll just see how we go. The time is pretty tight. But then there is a great interactive se uh, session at the end of this. Uh, we re really do want to uh, harness your brains, as was mentioned before, get you thinking, and looking around the challenges, um, or even if you agree with that goal, um, around the 1,000 kilometres square, which will then take back to the more plenary session afterwards. So the forum has recommended this goal under its statutory function to make recommendations to its members and to facilitate communication, cooperation and coordination. When we think about how we might achieve this goal, it's important that we think about all aspects of the challenge. For example, to simply look to restore historic shellfish beds, the locations they once occurred might not always make sense given the environmental conditions we now witness in the Gulf. And while we might naturally focus on the actual final step of reseeding and replenishing shellfish reefs, we also need to be mindful of impacts from land-based activities, such as sediment, nutrients, plastics, and the marine environment, such as commercial and recreational harvesting or dredging. I can look a bit closer. Thank you. For example, would we bother to replenish a bed if divers can simply go and take the new shellfish? Or if a nearby estuary or stream is delivering a toxic dose of nutrients, volumes of sediment that would simply kill the shellfish that are deployed on arrival. We therefore need to really understand both the mechanisms for shellfish restoration and the challenges for effective restoration. Maybe the range of tools, actors and methods are required without necessarily taking a one-size-fits-all approach. So that's what we hope we will explore in the next couple of hours here. Um, obviously make it as interactive as we can in the, in the latter sessions, but we've got a few talks to kick us off. And to start off, we've got a presentation on the marine biosecurity context. And um, we have Kathy Walls, Michael Townsend, and we have Mike, uh, Mel Tupé uh, filling in for um, Samantha Happy, who um, sadly couldn't make it uh, due to another commitment at late notice. Um, just quickly run through each of the presenters here with a brief overview. So Kathy's a senior advisor with Biosecurity New Zealand. MPI, a position she has held since 2009. Her previous work experience includes leading the National Marine Reserves Program for the Department of Conservation, and as a director of a large ecosystem-based management program in Fiji for the international NGO, Wildlife Conservation Society. Mel Tupé is a biosecurity advisor, a marine biosecurity advisor, sorry, for Auckland Council, and she's held that position since January 2019. Uh, prior to that, she's had 14 years of experience in marine science, uh, working both in New Zealand, Canada and the UK. And Michael Townsend is the team leader for coastal science at Waikato Regional Council, where his team conduct research exploring the health of coastal ecosystems and monitor the state of the environment. Prior to his current position, Michael was research scientist in IWA for 12 years, and the Marine Ecology Group. Can you please join me in welcoming Kathy, Mel and Michael. 